Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and today is going to be the first test of my DIY electric Mini Cooper. Oh! <laughs> your f***ing neighborhood? Uh, that was correct. I apologize. We had to shoot something for a documentation. So go to a f***ing racetrack! But today's Judgment Day. Is this thing going to blow up or what? No, it's not because I built this with my bare hands. Let's talk about how we got here. In case you're new and didn't watch any of the series, make sure you go watch the Mini Cooper playlist just in case you have any additional questions that weren't covered in this episode. After you do, hit the subscribe button because if I get to a million subscribers, my mom will finally acknowledge her second son and that YouTube is a real job. So a few months ago, I bought a 69 Mini Cooper that I got running after it was sitting for a few years. And of course, the death threats came in because people swore they would do awful things if I turned it electric. And because I always listen to my YouTube comment section, especially when my life is threatened, I turned around and I bought an R53 Mini Cooper with a blown engine for $1,500. And if you think $1,500 is expensive, then you're right. I could have had a running one for the same price. But this one was in decent shape and I like the color. That and finding one that wouldn't run is more environmentally friendly than ripping the engine out of a running one just for the clout. Now we pulled the motor at the electrified garage since it was much safer than using my Harbor Freight jack stands at a Jerry Rig winch. Speaking of that, make sure you check the serial numbers on your Harbor Freight jack stands because there was a recall on them. And speaking of EG, I'm going to shamelessly promote all of these Tesla expats joining the force. We're joining locations with signature custom wraps and coatings in Dania Beach, Florida, being run by the original technician of South Florida, Byron. This will be a complete one-stop shop, full maintenance, alignments, tire rotations, battery upgrades, and signatures complete custom shop that offers ceramic coating, color changing, vinyl wraps. Just check out the website www.electrifiedgarage.com to set up your service appointment. Now after the garage and I pulled out the gas tank, oh wait, oh that's free gas right there. I'm not throwing that away. I had my assistant lean to help me out and pour the premium gasoline into the gas tank in my pickup truck. We cleaned the engine bay with our ghetto bucket pressure washer and prepped it for its new powertrain. Then found a $200 electric motor from a school that had no use for it. Then Lee had to modify the coupling that goes from the motor to the transmission. This part is called the love joy that marries the two parts together. After that, I scored a cheap controller from a stranger on the internet. The controllers that I got are Zilla branded and very expensive, and the deal was too good to pass up, so it was worth something awful happening to me. But it's a calculated risk. No one that can bench press more than 75 pounds is selling a Zilla controller. Let's be real here. Steven fabricated the tray so we can mount the motor controller interface and fuse box, and I did everything else while Linda cleaned the stick shift of the car. We found these Chevy Volt batteries for cheap, and I mean really cheap, like $500 each. We watched Linda take selfies with the car, and then set the charge port within the gas cap, because that's what all the cool kids are doing, and then relocated the batteries to be hot swappable in case I'd want to run this at the 24 hours of lemons race. And so far, the pricing is as follows. $200 for the motor, $1,000 for the batteries, $1,500 for the car, $800 for the controller, $60 for the DC to DC converter, $30 for the throttle, $55 for the conduit at Home Depot, $10 for the shunt, the aluminum square and ABS plastic we had left over from the Cyber Quad, the vacuum pump was $60, the backing plate for the motor was $40, and the contactor was $15. These are the costs I have so far, and I'll get into the final pricing later. I've been pretty careful on spending so far. I don't want to lose my shirt because you guys aren't ready for all the abs. I do, however, want to remain on budget, and the reason why budget's important because all of the financial resources have been diverted to the project shown at at the end of this video, so make sure you stay to the end. I was able to remove all the components and parts in the Mini Cooper that weren't needed so I could sell them to assist keeping this budget down so I have more room for more projects. And pro tip, don't be like me. When I'm selling my Tesla parts, Mini Cooper parts, or body parts online, and setting up dozens of auctions in a row, and then getting overwhelmed and just going to Popeyes instead of shipping the products, I found a fancy resource called ShipStation, all right? It's the easiest, fastest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks, you're managing orders, printing out discounted shipping labels, and getting your products out fast. ShipStation works with all the major carriers, including USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even International. You compare and choose the best shipping solution every time. They even offer big discounts on shipping costs. And you can access the same postage discounts that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. And those out there in the internet world that could benefit from this, you can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use offer code RICHREBUILDS for selling whatever it is you're trying to sell. Use it now, later, after you watch this episode, doesn't matter. Make ship happen. And that's a great pun and you know it. Thank you, ShipStation, for sponsoring this episode. Let's take this Mini Cooper for a ride. Look at this. This is Linda's cleaning job right here. Look at that. Come on, Linda. 
Wow. Come on, lean duck. What, what is that, anyways? Come on, I don't even know. Grease oil? I remember her, she was cleaning it the other day. It looks terrible. I'll tell you one. The whole inside looks terrible. The stick shift, uh... That's kind of cleanish. Yeah. She was really working on that for yeah, a while. The flute's while. clean. Probably the cleanest thing in the car. Just clean your uh, whistle. Everything else is just, yeah, the floor's dirty. Like, she need like, what's, like, what was her deal here? Thanks, Linda. Thank you. If you're wondering where your other paycheck is, yeah. now you oh, know. Oh, oh. Can we put, can we do a stop payment on that check? <laughs> Let's do a stop payment. I didn't payment. send it just in case. Yeah, this is what I like. Quite, yeah. Make sure she never gets it. No. I mean, she couldn't anyways. No. Because she had, they have no address. <laughs> Woo! Uh-oh. Try that again, shall you? Oh, ready? Yeah, she's ready to just roll out. All right, ready? <laughs> All right, you got a guy fishing but my wheels are straight. What are you thinking? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, uh... A little, uh, a little bit to the right. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's as, uh, in the middle as it's gonna be. Yep, there we go. Nah, it's not gonna clear that. Uh, we need uh, some wood. We need some wood. We're gonna need a couple pieces of tracking to get it in between. Because right now, all it does is the front bumper pushes in yeah. to the trailer, and then the front tires are just. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right now. Dude, I'm not even. <laughs> Dude, it wants to destroy itself. Or you. Yeah, right? Not sure which. Richard, the amount of the weight in the car, it's gonna pop those right up. But don't take the word of an experienced Jedi for it, I guess. You have that? to watch that. What happened? Oh my fucking word. <laughs> <What? laughs> See if offloading gets uh, as interesting as unloading. How am I with the back? You're uh you're you're, you're just fine. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it, touchdown. Touchdown? Oh uh, yeah. All right. Nice. Oh, 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 flip, 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 flip. Hey, there it is. I hate this part. The faster you go, the less of the arc. That's right. Now we're going to that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Just, just real, real quick, it'll be fine. Wow. Man. Yeah. Yeah, you peed a little. That was a problem. That's a problem, Lee. That's a problem. <laughs> Dude, my <laughs> light flashed from my eyes. That's awesome. Lee, good. do you have like a, a 10 millimeter? Can I think that's yes. that thing's gone. I think he does. I He's already got the gloves on to change his underwear. I so. swallowed that thing. Dude. That thing's gone, Lee. I need to Man, this is it, Steve on. After uh, a weeks and weeks of, of hard work, here she finally is, man. She's uh, you mean months, huh? Months? Yeah, literally months. <laughs> weeks. <laughs> months. <laughs> it's funny. In, in the YouTube world, everything just seems like so accelerated, but this is it, man. I mean, this is a. Uh, it's a cool little car, dude. I mean, I, I gotta say, it's a really cool little car. It's quick. It's torquey. It's almost too torquey. You saw when we on the trailer. It's the the torque is just it just hits you. So I don't know if there's a way we could adjust that in the Zilla, adjust like the torque curves and like the ramp up. But the second you step on it, man, this thing just, it just jerks and wants to go. I like it a lot, man. It, feel, it feels good. It's, it's a nice little like drive around town and just kind of screw around type of car, like getting groceries and stuff like that and just beating people at stoplights, you know? The other thing that we have to do is um, figure out the, uh, 
the motor mounts because again there's this electric motor makes more torque initially than the previous motor that was in here before so things just want to like lurch forward like you saw it just wants to literally jump out of the uh the engine bay so we got to probably add another maybe one maybe two engine mounts uh to, <laughs> to, to keep just just there. one or two it's one or two a lot of people were complaining about the back seat or the thing being a lack of back seat and this is the way i wanted to do it because if we're gonna go for a hot swapping the next thing we have to do is we have to mount the batteries a different way we have to mount them so they're parallel so when we do go for a run for that lemons race we could actually pop it out lift it out and be able to service the batteries and swap them out very quickly so that's the that's the goal for that. Everyone's like, oh, I really wanted to see a daily driver back seat. And it's just like, all right, we'll go buy one then and do it yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, that's the thing is that the, the, the back seat was useless anyways. And the way we had it mounted before, we had both batteries stacked up on top of each other. I'm a pretty big risk taker, but, you know, let's just say I wanted to have my kids in the car. The event of like an accident or like we reverse and hit something or anything happens, that hundred and something pound battery is going to go flying forward and literally crush the necks of the people in the back seat. No matter how much you mount it. Take the ice cream right off the cone. That's what I'm saying. Ice cream off the cone. Yes. <laughs> Just, so no matter, so, so a lot of people were saying no matter, how, how, no matter how high you mount it, it doesn't matter if you were to get hit or something were to happen. That thing's going to go flying. It'll be pretty much a projectile. So... I just said, you know what, forget it, forget the back seat altogether, and I'm gonna mount more batteries in there. And we actually do have room to mount, I would say one or two more batteries for this for this whole race thing. But no, man, the car, uh, it, it feels good, it drives good. It's, again, the torque is, it might be a little bit too much for me even, Steven. What do you think? I mean, it's, it's torquey, man. I mean, it's no, it's no Tesla, but for a, such a small, light car, it's just jarring. It's, it's just, not as smooth. Yeah. It's but then very, again, it's manual. Yeah, it's just true. Yeah, it's manual. <laughs> that was our, our it's, plan. It's, it's, it's by design. It's very jarring. And I think, again, for the race, I'm going to swap the batteries to the side. We did a great job. It's all under budget, too. Under budget, baby. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Dude, Steve on, you got to admit, this is pretty damn clean. This is pretty damn clean. For, for a thrown-together budget EV... It's pretty damn clean. So the wiring's nice and tidy now. The main contactors. We still need a box. Need a box for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that shouldn't be exposed. That's, yeah. not, that's not a very good thing. The, uh, there's a heat exchanger. There's a small radiator I have. But because it was, I didn't have enough long tubes to go to the front, I just stuffed it underneath. <laughs> but that's something I have to take care of. The, uh, I put a bigger controller on there too. Remember, I had the Zillow 1K. This is the 2K with high voltage. Uh, I actually uh, traded a guy up for it. He, I gave him a hundred bucks um, for mine, and um, and he, I gave him mine and a plus a hundred bucks, and he gave me this one because he didn't really need it for his application. But, Neither do we. But yeah, this, this is actually too much for us too. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I mean everything is everything is here, man. For a DIY EV, for you know a, a few grand, this really really isn't that bad. Steven, this thing is so jarring. There's so much torque on this thing. It's ridiculous. We chose like, this. It's like it's the perfect burnout machine. Look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, she just launches well, every time. Yeah, it's that's just, all it's she just, wants to do. This is so much torque. Yeah, man. We did it. We did it, Steve. Woo! Woo! <laughs> We're rolling, baby. Let's do it. Dude, this is actually pretty cool, man. I gotta say, man, this is like fun. She's alive. She's alive, man. She's alive. She's driving. She's good. We got we got spectators and stuff like watching us. <laughs> what the hell? Making sure we're good. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, I'm not too pleased about this guy doing that. It's good, man. <laughs> Let me take a turn here. Documentation. So go to a fucking racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oops. Yeah, that wasn't good. I, you gotta have fun with it. I know. I, that guy was uh, a little mad, but okay. I guess we're gonna 
I wanted to see her dance. Yeah, well, no. Take a bark. No dancing, baby. Yeah. No dancing zone. Uh, yep. Well, yeah. Whatever. Well, yeah. Anyways, that uh, sticker's a little old, but whatever. Well, that's you know, that's, that's, uh, that's is what it is. It happens. Mm. So, all right. Well, I guess we got to find a new spot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oopsie. All right. Let's, let's light the candle. Oh, uh, exactly. For, for pay our respects. All right. All right. Let's go. Um. Yeah. That's so yeah, Stephen and I got a little rowdy, unfortunately, and it caught the attention of a bystander who really wasn't having it. So he ran on our parade. Quite literally, it started raining after he started yelling at us. But after that, we got some pretty good metrics out of the car before we went home. We drove back and forth on the strip at a slow speed until the battery died. It gave us about 41 miles of range. We also tested the top speed, which was 101 on a private course, of course, and a 0-60 to 60 time of 5.8 seconds. Now, we were able to achieve these crazy specs by changing out some of the controller settings and putting the batteries in series to get extra power out of the motor. Now, the most important thing I'd say is the price. We got to a total of 3770 at the beginning of this episode, but I bought a charger for 150 and added a BMS for 200 bringing the total price to 4000 120. I sold the blown engine with the smaller supercharger pulley for a thousand, sold the back seats for 60, sold the radiator and fan for 75, siphoned about $20 worth of gas out of the tank, the engine and wiring harness was a hundred dollars, and the ECU sold for 50, bringing the total price of the car to $2,815. $2,815. 41 miles of range, 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds and over 100 mile an hour top speed. For a budget EV build, I'd say it went pretty well. If I wanted more range, I could add more batteries. But remember, this will be a 24 hours of lemons car, so I need the ability to hot swap batteries instead of range and convenience. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Shout out to Green Shed Conversions in Florida for the inspiration for the build. And if you want to do your own conversion on a car, Check out the playlist for the Mini Cooper and then jump on to www.iaai.com where there's tons of cars you can choose from. You can buy them now at prices as low as 100 bucks. When you do, make sure you use code SAVE50 for half off registration. $2,800 for an electric hot hatchback. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below and I'll see you guys next week.